light. It would be miracle enough that it provides us food and shelter and clothing. But some 70 years ago, in the Indian state of Punjab, a precocious boy discovered that light can do much more. My father gave me a Kodak Brownie camera, small one. And it was fascinating. And I got very interested in what makes this thing work. And so gradually I got interested in, uh, in, in, in optics. After college, Narinder worked in a factory, making optics and soaking up business lessons. And then, as a graduate student at the University of London, Narinder joined a scientific race to bend light through a rope of glass fibers. And in 1955, he demonstrated transmission of an image through a bundle of fibers. I was the first one to be able to demonstrate that that is the case. His first images were blurry, but Narinder clearly saw a new field, and he coined it fiber optics. And this scientist, who had worked in a factory, now took a leap that would set him apart. On a trip to San Francisco... I called up uh, the Vice President of Bank of America in 1960, uh, 59 as a matter of fact, and said, I want to start a company here, and uh, he said, why don't you come over and meet me? And that's how it started. <laughs> <laughs> we know the rest. Today, fiber optics connects continents, delivers data to our phones and internet, helps us explore ocean floors and ourselves. And Narinder Kapani fueled that revolution, starting several companies in Silicon Valley, earning over 120 patents, developing countless optical and laser technologies, and writing a book on the field and creating products with Silicon Valley scientists like Dr. Wagi Isaac, himself a veteran of Hewlett-Packard and Agilent, and now vice president at Corning. Ask him about Narinder's impact. Narinder Kapani's contributions, the early pioneering contributions, are definitely the key to the success and of, of the development of the Internet. But over four decades, Narinder developed an even more important product, leaders. He has been a pioneer in starting companies, hiring the right people, mentoring them, and letting them go and invent and contribute to the area of fiber optics and optical communications. And to nurture tomorrow's talent, Narinder served UC Santa Cruz as a Regents Professor and Director of UCSC's Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurial Development. He endowed a chair in optoelectronics here, and to this day shares his vision. With a number of new technologies that have come up that one can... His mentoring play. has had quite an impact. Any regrets? No. I think there's about 12 of my ex-students that are presidents of their, own, of their own companies. And they come over and buy me lunch every so often, and I always tell them, hey, you know, I should have watched stock at your company. <laughs> this particular painting is in two parts. And Narinder shares this with his adopted country it. something else dear to him his heritage. He created a Sikh foundation which endows chairs in Sikh studies. And to the San Francisco Asian Art Museum, he donated his family's centuries-old collection of Sikh art. Museum director, Forrest McGill. Narinder is, is the dream collector in a certain way. I myself have been very attracted to the sense of idealism and altruism in Sikh culture that is what the Asian Art Museum is all about. And it makes us all want to cheer when we find that kind of outlook and connection. He's made a mark in so many ways, and that, he will tell you, was his dream. I think taking your scientific ideas into areas that were not there before, or your uh, cultural ideas that were going in a direction that's something different, it's it's, it's fun doing that, yeah. But uh, I don't want to say it's been easy. Not <laughs> everything requires effort, <laughs> a lot of effort. Narinder Kapani, for a lifetime he's pursued light and something more, enlightenment.